So I actually brought the, <laughs> the PES Win magazine with me today because I have forgotten it the last couple of weeks. So if you haven't gotten your latest edition of PES Wind, it's out and you can get it at PESWind.com. And there, uh, this one is, this episode of the magazine, or this edition of the magazine has a lot of great articles in it. And the one I saw uh, that, we, that I want to talk about is the CLS Wind and their lifting platform to a simple wind turbine. So they kind of have, if, if you think about the way you... Uh, build the tower. You should have this really big crane and it lifts this tower section up. You stack it, you bolt it on, you go to the next one. So it takes a lot of big cranes to get this job done. What they've done instead is made like a cog train. Uh, Rosemary, do you know what that is? Like, have you ever been to up a steep mountain in Switzerland and you take one of those trains and it has a cog on it? Yeah, the rack. It's similar to that on the on the backside of a wind turbine. Uh, Pikes Peak has a similar train. Phil, you've been on one of these things. So it's it's like a it's like a geared system with the platform that raises uh, the next section of the wind turbine up, and then you just slide it over and drop it on, bolt it on, keep going. So it makes like a built-in elevator with the turbine. Now, I, we've seen a lot of of ideas about how to install turbines faster, right? That seems to be a a, a big pain point with cranes because cranes you got to call the cranes, got to be there. It's expensive. This system and others like it are really trying to revolutionize the way we build wind turbines. And I, I, what I'm guessing is there, the backing behind it to do this, is there an industry drive or it, to, to do something like this, which is unique and probably will save a bunch of money versus just the rapid need to get turbines deployed? Is, is, is there a disconnect there? And that should we be looking at something more like a CLS wind system, which is more integral with the turbine and, makes it cheaper to install, do the OEMs just not care? Like it, Once it goes out the door, they'll figure it out. I mean, for offshore, I actually think this makes some sense, with, or you know, this or something kind of akin to this type of a solution. It's not the first time it's been proposed. Um, and Valmont actually is probably the, the company that investigated this uh, very early. They had patents dating back to like 2001 or two, I want to say on um, kind of uh, a lifting, basically a lifting platform where you could kind of, you know, um, build the, the turbine uh, sequentially. There's also companies out there like Nabra Wind is also, you know, trying to do towers and they, they've, you know, done some demos in Spain and, and in Africa and they licensed the technology to China. Um, I, conceptually, I like the idea of, you know, again, whether it's a slip form tower or, you know, what CLS Wind is, is doing. Conceptually, I like it. Uh, the challenge is kind of twofold. One, I think it makes a much more sense for bigger, either onshore turbines or definitely for offshore. If you're, if you're talking about like an 18 to 20 or, you know, the Chinese are now trying to design, you know, 25 to 30 megawatt offshore wind turbines, uh, you, I think you probably need a solution like this to be able to install it because you you were never going to have a boom crane big enough to be able to do, you know, a, a turbine that's got like a, you know, 280 meter hub height because it's got a, you know, 400 meter rotor kind of, a, you know, on a 30 megawatt wind turbine. So you're, you're necessarily going to have to have a solution like this if you want to go really big offshore. Um, we'll never have vessels that are, that are going to be capable of doing the installation or the maintenance on components. Um, so I think this is a good idea uh, kind of conceptually, I, I, aside from some of the commercial challenges, the biggest thing is also, you know, whether or not this thing is, is actually built to withstand, um, you know, cause these, Alan, you were talking about like these systems in, in Switzerland or whatever, you know, they get serviced very frequently this thing i don't know if it's now an extra thing that you've got to service and maintain as part of the turbine to be able to do your component swap outs uh you know it, it does add some cost and complexity but it does also facilitate you going to you know potentially a, a large onshore or definitely a huge offshore turbine let me ask Rosemary this because the wind catcher system, right, which is sort of that wall of wind turbines, does that approach to building something that massive require something like the CLS wind system? 
in order to build it efficiently that you need to sort of hoist it up in place uh, with a little more technology than just bringing a big crane out? Yeah, no, they've got their own um, like assembly and maintenance uh, infrastructure kind of incorporated into the wind catching uh, design. So it's like as lifts that run up the, I don't know, the, um, you know, there's that big grid structure with the little rotors in it and there's all these, you know, verticals along. So on the verticals they have these lifts and um, they can slot blades in and out and other big components in and out that way because, yeah, they're imagining, you know, obviously if you go from, um, I can't remember the exact number, but if you go from, you know, one rotor to 49 different rotors, if it's a seven by seven grid, then you're probably going to need to do maintenance more often, right? So they're imagining that you're going to be able, have to be able to get those components in and out. So they've integrated the installation and maintenance as part of it. And also for seeing, you know, like many others, that installation is one of the things that's getting, you know, they're the challenge of installation is getting harder, faster than the size of the turbines grow. You know, a little bit, a little bit bigger turbine is starting to make a lot bigger headache for installation. So most of the people that are coming up with um, innovative turbine solutions for offshore, especially, really have um, installation and maintenance as some of the the core reasons why they see that things need to go a different direction than just making things really huge. That and I mean, there's a few other things as well, but those are amongst the most important. So, yeah, I think um, I think it is time to to stop just thinking about the doing things the way that they have been done and just go bigger, 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 bigger because some things are starting to get really ridiculous, like the like the cranes. Um, and I mean, in Australia, even for onshore, even for onshore wind turbines in Australia, if you've got uh, you know a blade defect problem uh on a wind farm that was commissioned a while ago and so you know all your installation stuff is gone you know that that crane is gone and it's installing another wind farm it's not so easy to get your hands on on one in australia even for the onshore turbines so you know even even for the it it might be a solution that you create because people with the that are installing really big wind turbines that, you know, they have a need for it. They just simply can't install it without that. But I do see that it will filter downwards as well into the kind of existing, um, existing technology. They also have a bit, a bit of a problem. You know, it's not something that is make or break for the existing wind farms, but it is certainly, you know, on the blade defect problems that I work on, uh, a lot of the times it's dragging out what, you know, might have been a couple of month campaign might turn into closer to a year because you've got to worry about getting the crane on site and that sort of thing. Wow. So maybe the CLS wind type system would make sense then, like be able to just basically bolt something on and then elevate it down on a platform. That, that be cool is it something that needs to be does it need to be there from the start is it you know is it ch- does design change to the turbine or is it something you can just come back to an existing turbine and you know install a few components and then away you go well if it's not designed to do that they should design it to do that because i think that's a good idea it is it, like you said australia is probably the marketplace for this because the access to cranes right it would you design the towers to handle this system, and then when you need to do a major an MCE, you just do it, and you don't have to wait for a crane to come out. That makes infinite sense. That's going to do it for this week's Uptime Wind Energy podcast. Thanks for listening. Please give us a five star rating on your podcast platform and subscribe in the show notes below to Uptime Tech News, our weekly newsletter, and check out Rosemary's YouTube channel, Engineering with Rosie. And we'll see you here next week on the Uptime Wind Energy podcast.